the channel Fridays with Brandon. We have another video today with our good friend Jim Newell from Technical Support at Fluke, and he is going to go over the difference um, in the different kind of recording capabilities of the scope meter and how that can help us. So let me get Jim in here and we will jump into it. Hey, Jim, and welcome. Hey, hey Brandon. How are you doing this morning? Doing well. Ready for another video? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to share the screen. And uh, these are some screen captures that we did earlier. And we're going to talk through kind of uh, this application. So with a scope meter, when we talk to customers, we see they want to record. And the scope meter, if you click the record button, this guy right here, the um, recorder, what you're going to do is it's going to give you two options. It's going to give you trend plot record. Trend plot, think of that as a chart recorder. Uh, it's just going to give you the RMS value over time. And you can do trend, pro trend plot for a very long time. But you yeah, only get think, think, think about two weeks, Brendan. I think in the sample rates of uh, five readings per second, I think it is. So okay. it's pretty slow. It's pretty slow if you think about what a scope does. Um, so yeah. this is like a multimeter charting data over time. Pretty slow. Yeah. So, so it's almost Sorry like four. You. No, you're good. So it's like four multimeters basically recording over time. So it's very slow compared to a scope meter. But the whole reason people bought a scope meter is they want to look at something very fast and now they want to record it. So then they go, okay, well, scope record is the option I need, yep. which is kind of true. But we got this note out here to the side. Jim and I did some calculations. If you're at 60 hertz and you're at a four millisecond time division, you can record less than five seconds, which is not much time to capture something you're looking for. So then the real question becomes, Jim, how do we take it to that next step and not just have five seconds of recording, but I want to look for an hour, a week, mm -hmm. a day. I want to look for right. a longer period of time. And then I want to capture that, which does not look like everything else. So can you walk yeah. us through that, Jim? Sure. And just to uh, tether a little bit to what you said about the red um, verbiage to the left, not only does it do um, the four milliseconds per division, for 60 hertz, it's four milliseconds per division for anything. So um, talking with um, customers, um, this is a common uh, call that we get at tech support with the scope meters is that somebody wants to be able to have the scope monitor for an extended period of time, more than five seconds. Now the, um, the scope record mode can record for longer, <clears throat> but the time base gets compromised. You have to go like from four milliseconds to 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. So the scope slows down to be able to extend your length of recording, but it's not going to be able to capture, you know, the waveform that you're, that you're interested in capturing potentially. So uh, the pivot on that is that there's another feature in the scope meter called pass fail. And uh, the concept is, um, here's an example that Brennan and I did earlier, where um, I was just hooking up the scope meter to a 120 volt outlet, just to give us a signal to measure. So we're measuring basically 120 volts, 60 Hertz waveform. So let's say that the idea was that that's your, your waveform, that's normal, and that there's gonna be some moment in time that that waveform shape is going to change and you want to see that happen. That's the part that you're really interested in capturing. So the pass fail feature will get you into um, uh, an ability to create an envelope around that waveform, use it as a reference. And then if that waveform goes outside of that envelope, you capture it and you can get up to a hundred of those. I'm going to call that an event when it goes outside the envelope. Um, you're going to be able to capture up to a hundred of those. If um, you do, if you happen to have more than a hundred, the uh, meter will throw out the first one to give room for the hundred first, you know, first in, first out type of situation. Um, yep. So from here, um, Brent is going to show us uh, going from screen to screen how to get into the pass fail function. So you go into uh, waveform yeah. options there by pushing um, F4. 
And then here um, you scroll over to the far right under waveform and select reference. Yeah, and we're going to leave everything else in probably the the standard mode, um, right. unless you have reason point. to otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So references, and you're hitting not F4 anymore, or you'd hit close. So you got to hit enter down and, here. Correct. And how you scroll over there, you use these um, up and down, left to right arrows. That's how you scroll because it's not touch screen. Yep. And then here, um, this is the, the reference uh, that we briefly talked about. So you're going to say you're going to create a new reference. So scroll down, hit enter. And then, then you get to decide how big of an envelope that you want to put around. I typically do the five pixels because if you're going to see here in a second what it looks like, but there's going to be an envelope of a certain width all the way around this, the sine wave. And you can pick different pixels, but for visual, um, I thought it was good to pick five. And then we hit enter. And so in the background, you can see the um, the red uh, solid line is your waveform, and the pinkish light red is the envelope around that waveform. And it, the uh, there's some verbiage there at the bottom of the screen talking about uh, viewing it in the replay, and um, we're going to go that that place next. Yeah. So what Jim is saying, if if this dark red line were to get outside of the pink, that's going to trigger it to capture that screenshot. Oh, we didn't say. So you hit close, you hit F4 to hit close, and then it's going to go back to this screen and show you what you've already selected. Yep, because you can change you your mind. Close. You can change your mind is the idea. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then here we're going to um, tell the, uh, the scope meter that we want to use the pass-fail function. This is where since we created the envelope, we can either say pass fail or pass, um, you know, good. I can't, what does that say? Yeah. So we can say we, we're going to store as store the failed options, store the pass options or turn it off. And we're going to store the failed options. So anything outside of that envelope, if you wanted to store the things that are inside, then you can do that. And you push enter when you're highlighting yep. it. Yep. Then it talks about, you can look at these failed situations in the replay, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Just another note for us. And here we're seeing it kind of, we already talked about that. That's just the yeah. ooh, ah yeah. screen. Yeah, and this is, what, this is what the live screen would look like, the one previous. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me go back. Yeah, that is what the live screen looks like. Yeah. So that's what it looked like. Everything's normal. Look like that. You can stay there for a minute, an hour, a week, whatever, and just look at that if you wanted to, but you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to leave and come back later. Yeah. So now Jim started messing with the scope, the input. He started turning the uh, surge bar that the scope was measuring out of, not what it was powered out of, but what it was measuring out of. He started turning that on and off. Yeah. Just measuring that 120 volt signal. Yep. So here, here we've stopped the record function and we went into the replay. That's why there's a little hand down there. Yeah, so that's where we're at. And we're going to scroll through the different events that I created on purpose. Um, just to give you some examples of what it would look like. So you can see here, we're going along at 60 hertz, all's good. And then Dang. starts being funky because... Jim decided to be naughty and right. the off switch. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see again, still jumping outside of that pink zone. And, and how we're getting from one screen to the next, you can hit play, but it's going to go really fast. But you can hit previous or next, and it's going to toggle through one screen at a time. And that's what Jim's doing right. um, for these different oh. screen captures. Oh yeah, Brendan, I just remembered another thing we forgot to talk about. Up in the top right hand yeah. corner, um, you can see uh, the number of the um, of the replay screen that you're looking at, but right above that is the day, month, year, and hours, minutes, and seconds to tell you when it actually happened. That's critical, I think, yep. anyway. Yeah, it'll be time and date stamp. And assuming you actually set this correctly, it will be correct, but we didn't yeah. set it correctly yeah. before yeah. we started, so. 
So some, some examples of what it looks like when things can go hairy. Yeah. So this is an example of we have no power and then Jim flips the switch on and it jumps right back into that pink cycle. Yeah. And then this is completely off. Um, and I think that's it. Now, I know that this is not the most exciting content in the world, but for those of you that are seasoned professional scope meter users, this is something that a lot of users don't aren't aware that they can do. And it really gives you a lot more uh, capacity or capability out of your scope meter. You can get more out of your scope meter. If you can set it up like this, let it run, you can capture that that one time that the waveform doesn't do what you expect it to and have it time and date stamped. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. And uh, so I hope this was a helpful video. And Jim, I thank you for your time. And we will be back with a third edition of this video where we're going to talk about how do you get this information out of the scope and onto the PC and how you can make a report or do some diagnostics with that. Exactly. So thanks, Jim. You bet. Thanks, everybody. Take care.